Tell me when you're ready, and I'll, I'll be, launch the rocket. I'd be ready. Earlier this year, 2024, the President of the United States signed the FAA reauthorization bill. It's over a thousand pages, and Pat and I read these things so you don't have to, but there's some really interesting stuff in there about the FAA reauthorization that I think benefits general aviation pilots and enthusiasts a lot. First for me, Pat, is basic med. They'll be expanding basic med to allow Larger aircraft, it'll go up to 12,500 pounds instead of 6,000 pounds, more seats. It's going to be really wonderful. But I also think there's a part that might touch you. They're talking about basic med being acceptable for designated pilot examiners now, not having to go for the third class medical. Do yeah, you have a favorite part that kind of gets you fired up about this? Well, I like the I like the basic med for examiners because that that's one one way that we could increase the examiner population. Uh, the FAA currently in in our guidance requires that we carry at least a third class medical, and if if, uh, if yeah, now that it's in in the rule that we can do it under basic med, um, that theoretically should open up. Uh, perhaps some retired examiners that have been through the vetting process who might be able to come back into the fold uh, because they they can do it under basic med now. So yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm sure everybody listening is is aware of the the controversy over Hunter Low Lead and the attempts, uh, many attempts to find a drop in replacement so that we don't have to uh, basically uh, replumb every airplane that's ever been made. Um, and there is a provision in here that requires any airport that has carried 100 low lead uh, as of 2022 uh, requires them to continue to carry it through at least 2030. Um, and again, there's some, you know, what, we're trying to hit the high points here, Jamie. You know, the devil isn't always in the details. And as you said, it's a thousand page bill. Uh, only some of it pertains to general aviation. And, and there's a whole lot more uh, in the general aviation stuff then we're going to talk about today. We're, we're just talking about kind of the high points that, you know, kind of caught our eye that we thought some of the listeners might be, uh, you know, by, might be interested in. Um, oh, and it I, allows us to do some once in a lifetime things. Well, I think of it as once in a lifetime. One of the things that caught my eye is the, the uh, letter of deviation authority, the LODA, which right. if you're going to do instruction in experimental aircraft, you have to have a LODA because you can't use an experimental aircraft for commercial things, but there are some aircraft that are um, primary or limited category, which were exempted from that. And that includes things like that super cool two seat P-40 that yeah. um, Warbird Adventures has up in South Carolina. I would love to fly that thing, but it wasn't legal. When this gets all worked out with the FAA in the coming year, and it should all come into play by 2025, you'll be able to go do dual time in a P-40 that's in the limited category. To me, that's very exciting. Oh, that's extremely exciting. Another thing that has excited me a little bit, although I don't do a lot of off-airport flying, you remember the case of Trent Palmer, who has oh, yeah. kind of vilified for doing a low approach uh, to make sure that an area that he was considering landing uh, in was safe decided it wasn't. And, and of course, now he's paying the price for what it's essentially it was really good judgment, not landing where it wasn't safe. But now there's a, a, a provision in the FAA reauthorization bill that has been signed into law that uh, essentially prevents uh, future FAA enforcement action uh, for that kind of thing. That's, that's very exciting as well. Yeah. And I, particularly like there is a section in this, believe it or not, that will assist in the prevention of the closure of GA airports. I really do like this because throughout my career, I've lived near places and sometimes even the primary airport where I was, the public wanted to close it because they wanted to build a park or an office center or something like that. That's always been a challenging thing. And in many cases, you know, there were all these airfields in World War II or pre-World War II that the military used during that time period and then gave to the municipality or the county to operate as an airport in perpetuity. And now the FAA is really going to start buckling down on that and, and saying, hey, you can't close this. If it's going to have an impact, a negative impact on general aviation or the area, you can't close it. That's a huge win for aviation. 
big, big win for aviation. Another one is uh, the so-called MOSAIC rule. It stands for Modernization of Special Airworthiness Certification Rulemaking. I'm I've sorry, what was that, that, Mr. Brown? That, let me, re- let me repeat a, that. Uh, let me uh, repeat it's a beautiful that. line. <laughs> yeah, modernization. I'm reading it here from my script. Modernization of Special Airworthiness Certification Rulemaking, or MOSAIC. Uh, it's a stretch, but it stands for MOSAIC. And uh, among other things, uh, it it will have an impact on airplanes that are considered to be light sport. Um, the uh, the idea is to raise the stall speed of the airplane, which uh, in doing so will also raise the weight limit of the airplane. But they're choosing to limit the weight by limiting the stall speed. And right now, the negotiation it's not a final rule, but um, uh, but expectations are that sometime. Uh, in 2025, it will be a final rule. But right now, the haggling is over what the final stall speed will be. I think it's 54 right now, but a lot of the alphabet groups are uh, lobbying for 57 knots, which would include more airplanes, would include 170, uh, it's not uh, 172, uh, I think archers, warriors, maybe the 182. In That'd other words, remarkable. a larger number of airplanes. It would be really awesome if you could fly those airplanes under light sport rules. So that was absolutely to me is fantastic. Exciting. Now, one of my true favorites, I, I'm really excited about this, and I'm glad you're sitting down, Pat, because this is going to blow your mind. I want you to prepare. Remote control towers are coming. And uh, actually, yeah. I've, I've spent the last couple of years getting into this because one of the first places it's going to go is right on my airport, Winter Haven Regional Airport here in Winter Haven, Florida. We really? are well into the process of having a remote tower, and there will be a remote tower in Bartow right nearby. Basically, the deal is, in round numbers, building a manned tower costs about $70 million. Building a remote tower only costs about $7 million. And the cool thing about it, I love this tech, pack. You would love it. You could be a remote tower operator in Houston, and I'm a remote tower operator in Central Florida. I got nothing going on and you're getting overloaded with the flip of a switch. I'm now helping you control your airspace. And then when I get the flip of a switch, you can help control mine. It's amazing tech. It is coming. And this reauthorization bill verifies it. This is going to be something that's going to really help non-towered airports, which there are thousands of where we're getting high density traffic because of flight schools and recreational flying. And it gets a little hazardous at times. This is going to be huge. That is that is awesome. You know, ADSB is uh, facing some uh, some changes too, or some potential uh, changes. Um, the FAA has been been mandated to develop a a lower cost voluntary ADSB um, box, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it, uh, that you can put on your airplane. Uh, it would be voluntary for use in airspace, perhaps where it's not required, but at a lower cost than some of the units that are out there today. And along the same lines with ADSB, um, there's a provision in here to prohibit the use of ADSB for to basically bus pilots for for making a mistake. Um, hopefully, a legitimate mistake, but but nonetheless <laughs> a, a mistake. So so they're 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 specifically saying. Uh, to the FAA, you can't use ADSB to go after someone for enforcement action. There is a part in this too that affects every single person who ever buys an airplane. And I love this because you and I have both bought airplanes and we send our paperwork into the FAA and I understand COVID and they were overworked and understaffed and all that sort of thing. But you've got 120 days to get that permanent registration and you're at 119 and you haven't gotten the paperwork yet. And you're thinking, I, I'm paying for insurance and a hangar and maintenance on an airplane. I'm about to be barred from flying. No longer. You're going to be able to fly on that temporary, even if it extends past that 120 days until the FAA gets the paperwork to you, which means you don't run the risk of having an airplane grounded because of a paper or snafu or because it got lost in the mail. Yeah, and boy, I'll tell you what, that can, that can happen too. When I bought my 182, I had to renew the temporary registration three times. And it was about halfway through the third, you know, 120 days uh, each. And uh, about halfway through the third renewal, I finally got the copy. But now they're talking about 10 business days. And yeah. so that's, and you know, I'm going to seven years helped, certainly helped that. 
but um, 10 business days is a whole lot better than nine months. That one got me. It really did because it literally has been people buying an aircraft and the paperwork process has taken months and months and headaches. And you certainly don't want to miss that because if you were flying and something were to happen, your insurance company is not going to cover you. That was not a registered airplane. Now right. we've got a fix for that. So, I mean, some of these things seem kind of like nerd-like where it's just paperwork sort of thing. But man, they really have an effect on pilots, students, aircraft owners, operators of airports. It's really going to open things up and make life better for general aviation pilots, really yeah, another, noticeably. Yeah, another another thing too is that, that now uh, they're being mandated to remove the expiration dates from the uh, CFI uh, ticket. Um, now that doesn't mean that it, that it doesn't mean that it doesn't expire. It just means that they're taking the expiration dates off the ticket, so you're not having to get a brand new certificate every single time you go to renew. And there are there are some conversations as to other ways to renew besides the FERC and things like that. But those details have still got to be worked out, and I don't know enough about what those uh, recommendations or or uh, policies are to have any kind of a conversation about that, other than the fact that uh, they've been mandated to remove the uh, expiration dates from the actual certificate itself. Well, you know, that opens the door to the closing of this episode about this stuff. The Senate and the House passed it. The president signed it. So the FAA reauthorization bill is law. It did move on to the FAA. Now the FAA has a period of time, like you're talking about Mosaic, to expand light sport. They have to figure out how they're going to do that and issue it. And they have a time limit where they've got to get it done. Part of the reason we bring this up as high points is that's all we have at this stage. They, right. they haven't hammered out all the details, but just the topics are so exciting, whether that's the load of change or uh, basic med for DPEs or remote towers for non-towered airports. All these things are coming down the pipeline, not maybe someday, they are coming, and we're going to see it within the next year. And frankly, Pat, I'm very excited about all of it. Yeah, me too. It bodes well for general aviation. It truly does. I couldn't be more excited myself. Yeah, and you know, we. I think sometimes I notice a lot of content on YouTube, and even we sometimes talk about a career in aviation, which has been very satisfying for both of us. Right. But for an awful lot of people... This is a recreational thing. This is just something that enhances their life. They take the family, they involve their friends or whatever. They're not doing it as a job. All these things make that that much easier, make general aviation that much more viable. And it means we can all have some confidence that maybe our local airport's not going to close. Maybe it's not going to be so hard to get access to the fuel we need. Maybe we can fly the aircraft that we owned for all these 30 years, but do it under light sport. This is exciting times, so there's reason to be optimistic. Yeah, there is. If anybody wants to look that bill up, you could look it up under H.R. 3935 from the 118th Congress, H.R. 3935 uh, from the 118th Congress. Just do a Google search and you'll find it, and there you, there you have it. You know, you're now going to bring somebody, I always recommend people leave comments. Now somebody's going to comment and say, hey, on page 872, the third paragraph, you guys said that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to say, well, yeah, I probably did. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, it seems like that uh, in a previous episode, you know, we said uh, we, we dared somebody to find the documentation and by God, they did. <laughs> Yep. Well, the power of the internet. You put a message uh, out there. There's people listening. There are. There indeed. All right, man. I can't thank you enough for discussing this topic. You know, this is that kind of nerdy stuff people don't generally want to get into, but this is a big deal. And I really appreciate it, Pat, because you've got a huge brain and a lot of experience, and I rely on you to look somewhat functional. <laughs> did, did I pass the test today? <laughs> did well. Folks, click right. like. Comment down below. What, let us know what you think about these reauthorization tidbits we've been sharing. And, of course, subscribe to the channel because we just get so lonely. We need somebody to hang out with. Pat, I will see you next time. Adios, pal.